I'm going to show how to use the recap in an estimate now. From the home page, I click on List Estimates, and it goes to the list of estimates, goes to all of our estimates. I'm going to click on Commercial Estimate and use that for an example. Now I want to make an observation. There's only one section set up in this estimate. The name of it is Electrical Section. In, when you're estimating projects, you might have multiple sections in here, and I didn't go over that yet. If you ever have questions, just keep, keep in mind that you can always use the Help button, okay? Just click on Help if you need help with anything. But I'm going to click on Recap at the top here, and it'll open up the recap for this estimate that I've already done work on. We'll come back to it later on the header here. I'm going to show a quick overview, but the header will go back in here and edit this later. But moving, moving forward with the explanation, You'll see the column here, or the header, it says description, and then total, and then electrical. We have one section in here called electrical. We input materials, and the program input labor and materials here. And it shows a total material amount. See the material cost over here? The total amount is $14,183. Now, just scroll down this on the right-hand side here slowly. We'll notice that the program displays how many hours are in the project. Crew labor hours here. It shows that there's 377.58 hours. Okay. Now scrolling down a little further, it converts the program converts your labor hours to dollars or cost of labor. And what it does is it takes the crew composite number up here. This is currently set at 35. It multiplies that times the number of hours to come up with your labor budget or your cost of labor in this estimate. Now scrolling down a little bit further, you'll notice that the program displays prime cost. This is your cost of the job. Now we're going to input some other items in here that, where this is going to change, but I'm just showing you that this recap, it's important to understand what the cost of your job or estimate is. Okay? Then the program takes your markup, or say, uh, let me say it this way, the program marks up your prime cost to come up with a your total markup here, which is your total overhead and profit, it shows at 7,552. Now quickly, again, this estimate is set up to be marked up 15 and 10. Again, you'll change these numbers in a couple minutes. But we scroll down here, see the program took the prime cost times 15 times 10 to come up with, it, it displays what your what's in it for you, if you will, 7,552 is your markup. Then it shows the subtotal and the total. total. The total being the total sell price is currently at $36,049. Now that's just a quick overview. Next we're going to get into editing the header. header. Now again, keep in mind, again, I'll say it one more time, but it's important. If you need help, just click the Help button. So in order to edit the header here, we'll just click on Edit Header button. It'll open up and let you change it. Let's say that you want to change your markup to 10, or rather I should say 12% overhead and 8% profit. Now these numbers are used for explanation only. Your numbers will vary greatly. So you set up your tax percent at what you pay at sales tax in your area. I'm going to set it up at 9.87. Okay, And you set your crew composite rate up at what the average cost per man per hour is. Once again, if you need help with this, click the Help button at the top and it explains your crew composite rate. I'm going to set mine at $42 an hour. I'm going to say that's my average cost per man per hour. Now I'm going to show one more thing in the header here. I should say two more things, but with regard to general foreman. If you want to add labor for general foreman, then, then you can input your general foreman rate here. Say that you have a person that works in the field or a person that roves from job to job that you want to cover some of the expense. So I'm going to put it, uh, the general foreman rate in at $5 an hour more than the crew composite rate. So I'm going to say it costs me $5 an hour more than just my average person in the field. So I'm going to set it up at 47 And then over here where it says general foreman percent, you put in the percent of hours you want to add for the general foreman. I'll show you what this means in a minute, but I'm going to set it up for 8%. Now again, these numbers are for example only. And I'm going to pretend that I have to pay bond or bid bond for this project. And so I'm going to pretend that my bid bond cost me 2.5%. So I'll put in a 2.5 or 2.5 in the bond. And I'll save the header. Okay. When I save the header, it recalculates the estimate. Now I'm going to scroll down here just to quickly show. 
um, what, what results, what the results are. Notice that now the program is set up for my labor cost. It shows crew composite rate here at 42, just like it was set up here, $42 an hour. This program uses that as a basis of my average cost per man per hour. It'll take that times the 377 plus hours to come up with the labor dollars or the cost of my labor, which is $15,858. Okay. Now I input I input the general foreman rate and general foreman percent at 8%. We'll look down here. Notice that the, the program added general foreman labor hours. Again, the intent of this or the purpose I use it for is to add for supervision. The program threw in 30.21 general foreman hours. Again, at the rate that I set up here at $47 an hour. Now I'll scroll back down to the bottom. I want to explain where the, the program inputs your bond percent. See, we added 2.5%. We pretended we had a bid bond on this estimate. So I scroll down to the bottom and see where the program added $994 to the bond. Okay, so it included that. And now it comes up with your total, if you will, sell price is currently at $40,763. That's where it's at right now. I'm going to demonstrate how to input your material quotes or quoted materials. In Red Rhino Recap, anytime you see an underlined number, this number happens to be zero when you're starting out, but anytime you see underlined numbers, it means it's a link that you can click on to open it up. Now I'm going to go down here to where it shows quoted material including tax. I'm going to click on the underlined zero. When I do, it opens a window and it displays the names of some items that I can input quoted materials. Now, just to keep it a simple example, first I want to explain something. You can go in here and you can change any of these descriptions. Say, for instance, you're getting a generator quoted. You could just go change the description to generator. I won't do it here, but you can. You would just highlight it and change the name and go over in here and type in the dollar amount. Now, in this example, I'm just going to pretend that I got a quote for $2,350, a quote for lighting fixtures. Now keep in mind, you don't ever input commas into Red Rhino. The, the software will do that for you. So don't enter commas in here. But I'm going to also imagine that I got a quote for switch gear. See, I had some panels and circuit breakers and maybe a transformer. Now, just as an example, I'm going to type in um, $4,570, pretending that I got a quote from my wholesale vendors or gear vendors for switch gear. Now when you're all done with that, you click Save and Close, and when you do, the program adds that to your estimate. Now if you look at the description of what this is here, it says quoted material including tax. The program added tax on top of what we input here. Okay, So that's how you input your quoted materials at the recap. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit, and we're going to input some expenses. So over here you see the word expenses. Over to the right I click on the underline zero. Same drill. It's going to pop up. Uh, uh, it's going to display a pop up here. And this is where I can input my expenses. If I have, uh, uh, if I have to pay for, for rental fees for scissors lift or a man lift, I would put my fees in here. I'm going to put in $500 for my scissors lift or man lift rental. And these are alphabetized. Um, also, a uh, permit fees. Let's say I'm going to pretend that I have a $350 worth of permit fees. So I type in $350. Now it's a, it works the same way here. You scroll up to the top, click Save and Close. When you do, the program adds that. You see expenses now are $850. It works the same for subcontracts. If I click on the underlined zero here or this underline here, it opens up a window it allows me to put in for my subcontracts. I'm going to imagine on this estimate that I got a price for my fire alarm contractor of $4,987. I just type that in. If I had other subcontractors giving me numbers, let's say I had a concrete contractor that gave me a price. Here's my concrete work. I would just type in the number here. Then when I'm all done, I won't, I won't type it in, but you understand how to do it. I click Save and Close, and again, it adds it to the estimate here. And if I scroll down, the whole time that I'm adding these things, 
the software or the program is recalculating my total. Okay. Now, another way to use this feature is, let's say that you're, you're, you're working on an estimate and you need to get a number out real quickly and you realized you forgot some materials and you just want to plug them in real quick. You go up here to Other Material Cost, click on the underlined zero, it produces a list. Let's say that I forgot some fixtures. I'm just going to type in fixtures here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to type in $780. I'm just going to pretend that I forgot to add some light fixture prices. I'm just going to plug it right here. I save and close. It adds it to the estimate. Okay. Same, same with additional labor. Let's say that I look at the labor here, and I think this should be more hours. Let's say I want to make it an even 400 hours for whatever reason. I'm just going to go into other labor hours. I'm going to plug about 33 hours in here and try and get that to be 400. Now, sometimes it works that way. Again, when it comes show time or time to bid a project, you just want to plug numbers and get this bid out. So I'll click on this underlined here. Now, I usually like to, to name mine labor adder. So maybe it doesn't fit the description of conduit hours or whatever. I'm just going to call it adder. So I'll retype it. I'm going to type in the word adder here. I don't know if that's a real world word, but that's what I use. I just know what it means. I'll type in 33 here for the hours. I'll save and close. When I do it, adds 33 hours to the estimate. You see it right here under labor, other labor. And keep and again, I was trying to make the total labor or just the, 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 the labor of the crew to be 400 hours. And the program added uh, all the labor together down here, 440 hours, including general foreman. But again, I wanted to show you how to input just if you have to plug labor hours real quick, you can do it at the recap. So that's how you enter your quoted materials, your expenses, and your subcontract numbers, your other material cost, other labor, to your estimate real quickly here at the recap. I'm going to explain how to use Red Rhino as a tool for being more competitive with your estimate. This estimate example, the markup or the overhead and profit is set at 12% overhead and 8% profit, meaning the program is going to mark up everything 20%. Now I'm going to show you how to surgically change that. Notice that there's $7,611 worth of quoted material on this line. I'm going to show you how to change the markup or reduce the markup to be more competitive. I, to do so, I click on the Edit Items button. When I do, it opens up dialog boxes that can, where I can make changes. I, I call it surgical changes. Notice that the quotes overhead percent is set at 12%, and the quotes profit percent is set at 8%. Now, I'm going to, to, in order to be more competitive, I'm going to mark it up a total of 10%, 5 and 5. In other words, I'm going to set the quote overhead percent at 5, Then I'll go down and set the quotes profit percent at 5 also. And when I save these changes, this total will, will change. Notice the total now is $59,932. Now when I scroll up to the top and click Save Items, I'll scroll back down and I notice that the price reduced almost $900. Now, if I would have wanted to, I could also go in and change the markup for expenses overhead and expenses profit and make it even more competitive. And that's how you use the recap to be more competitive in your estimate. I'm going to explain how to analyze the labor in your estimate using the recap. Now I have highlighted the total labor hours which is 440.79. We'll just call it an even 440 hours. When you're doing an estimate you have to determine what your crew size is, meaning how many men or people you'll man the job with. So in this example I'm going to say that I'm going to use three guys, I plan on three guys doing this job. What I need to do is I need to determine how many hours my burn rate is per day. In other words, how many hours am I burning through a day? With three guys, eight hour day, it's 24 hours. So here's what I do. 
I'm just getting a calculator out, and I'm going to put 440 for the number of hours in my calculator, and I'm going to divide that by 24, which is the number of hours I burn per day. When I hit the equal sign on my calculator, it shows me that it's 18 crew days, 18 days or 18 crew days, meaning my guys will be on this job, three guys, if I man it with three guys, they'll be on the job for three weeks, in other words, three five, five day weeks, and an extra three days. Now here's what I mean to tell you by this. If you know that you need more labor, or if you think that you need a three-man crew to be on there for four weeks, then you'd have to go in and add labor. It's important to analyze your labor, and, and the recap here helps you to see through it. Now if I wanted to add labor, I would go up here where it says other labor hours, I would click on this link in other labor hours and I would add however many hours I needed to and save it. And when I did, it would add those hours. So that's how you use the recap to analyze your labor. I'm going to explain how to analyze the profit in the estimate using the recap. The profit, or the total markup in an estimate, is displayed in the recap next to total overhead and profit. You'll see it's highlighted in blue on this page. So the total overhead and profit is $9,317. Or I might say it another way, the total markup that I have in the job. In other words, what's in it for me or what's in it for my company is $9,317. Now, I did a labor analysis on this estimate, and I determined that my crew, three-man crew, would be on this job for, for 18 days. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out my calculator. I'm going to type in the $9,317, 9317, and I'm going to divide that by the 18 days that I estimate, or I should say that's in this estimate, the 18 crew days that I'm going to be on that job. I hit the equal sign on my calculator and it displays $517 and change. And here's what that means. If, my, if, I, if I bring this project in on budget, the labor budget and the, and the material budget, then there's $9,317 in the job for me, or I'm going to bring in $517 per day that I'm on this job for 18 days. And that's how you do a profit analysis using the recap.